Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is the first video of mine that you've watched. Today we are talking about under eye Botox. Last year I got under eye filler for the first time and it's a video that has resulted in a lot of emails, a lot of DMs, a lot of people reaching out and kind of discussing their issues with me. So obviously like the first thing I need to address there is that I am not a qualified medical practitioner, I'm just somebody who is looking to treat their under eyes. I, as you can see from the shape of my eyes, I have quite a deep tear trough. I do have filler in this at the moment. Naturally it's even deeper, but even with filler you can see I've still got that shape of eye where I've got that tear trough. When I smile it causes lines under my eyes more than it does at the side of my eyes. I do have Botox at the side of my eyes as well, but even pre-Botox, which you'll see at the start of this video, the lines under my eyes are more of a concern to me than the lines at the side of my eyes, all of which is just because of the shape of my eyes. After the under eye filler video was so popular, I have decided every time I try a different thing around my eye area, I will make a video about it and I'm going to collate all the different things that I try into an under eye treatments playlist. So if you have missed the first two videos, the first one is obviously as I said, getting tear trough filler. And the second one was my experience of trying out the Dr. Dennis Gross Spectralite LED Eye Mask. So I will link the playlist up in the eye if you want to go and check any of the other videos in that out. Today's video is about under eye Botox. Under eye Botox is something that I actually asked about at the time I first got my under eye filler last year. The nurse who did my under eye filler said, as a personal choice, it isn't something she does. She thinks it looks really unnatural when people don't have any lines at all. So she prefers to treat the sides of the eye um, and still let there be a little bit of expression underneath the eye. But for me, as I said, the lines at the side of my eyes aren't as much of a concern. I think because of my eye shape, my under eye lines are much more of a concern. And that was also the response I got from a lot of people who watched the under eye filler video was that if you've got this shape of eye where you do have a deep tear trough and your eyes are quite deep set, the lines under your eye in perspective in the grand scheme of things, especially with the way things are in the world at the moment, under eye lines are so not a problem, but it's maybe what people with my eye shape are more concerned about. I saw a friend of mine online going to Dr. Mira, who is the practitioner that I have gone to in this video. I paid for all my treatments myself, by the way, although I'm saying who I went to, it's not in collaboration with anybody or anything like that. It's just me recommending who I've gone to. But a friend of mine had been to Dr. Mira for Botox. I had clicked on to look at her profile and I noticed she did a treatment which she calls Eyes Open, which is under eye Botox and it's designed to sort of cause the, the line to drip down and therefore drip out. So filler under the eyes will not stop your lines from forming the way that like Botox at the side of the eyes would stop you from being able to create that expression. But what filler does do with the lines is it pushes the whole area out, it lets more light into the area and it diminishes the look of them. So it does help with under eye lines, but it does not do what Botox would do, which is to actually cause them to relax out, which is what I was then interested in with this treatment. As I did with the under eye filler, I've just videoed it as I've gone along, showed you the different sessions, and that is what we are going to go into now. So enjoy. Hey guys, so it is Sunday the 7th of August. I have piled my hair up on top of my head so that you've got a very unobstructed view of my face. Whether you're thanking me for that or not is another matter. I actually have just been in the shower so I've washed my face but I haven't even put moisturiser or anything on yet. I am going to put on this before I leave the house. Medicaid Advanced Day Ultimate Protect Moisturiser with SPF 50 on. Um, but that is the only skincare that I'm going to put on today just to try and give you a sort of unobstructed footage of my raw skin as possible without any serums or anything kind of plumping it up. Uh, the opposite of what I'm usually, you know, trying to do with my skin. But anyway, this is the before. I feel like the thing with these lines is that actually when... So can you see if I smile? It's this line here and it starts here and it goes all the way along. When I'm not wearing makeup is actually when it looks its best. It's the fact that when I'm wearing makeup it sort of falls into it and actually I feel like emphasises it. So I feel like it's actually more visible with makeup on than it is just in my bare skin. So this is the other side and I do have 
this line here on this side but I don't feel like I've got the equivalent of this line on this side. I feel like this side of my face, everybody's face is asymmetrical. Botox practitioners and things will tell you usually people use ones that because they're asymmetrical they use the sides of their faces slightly differently when they're making expressions so actually you'll find the muscle it's quite common that the muscles on one side of the face are stronger um, and therefore th there's probably more lines so it's definitely this eye um, which is my right eye that I've got this line here that I am focused on trying to to sort of tackle this is the before or this is the state of things on 7th of August pre-Botox so I'm just going to put some footage in of me pulling some really attractive faces because I think it's all very well and good saying this is what my face looks like when I'm just talking but obviously the lines aren't there for most of it so I'll show you me smiling my kind of standard if someone was taking a photo of me smile and I'll show you some close-ups of that. I think the thing is we analyse our faces based on photographs and based on the way we look in photographs whereas actually if I'm out with my friends and I'm like really laughing you know the sides of my eyes are thinging up whereas if I'm just smiling for a photograph and it's a sort of controlled smile that only generates one or two lines. It's all good and well to sort of look at your face like this and look at your face in a sort of this is my smile kind of way but actually if you're laughing or you're scrunching your nose up or you're, you're doing something that you wouldn't do in a photo that's actually probably where the lines are really coming from if that makes sense so I think it's you know important to look at your lines smiling normally smiling like really widely as if you're properly laughing about something and like maybe scrunching your nose up as well just to get a kind of full picture so i'm going to insert footage of me pulling all those very attractive faces <laughs> To the real-time treatment so I just wanted to put a little warning up here there's quite a lot of blood so I did in this video although the video is more concentrated on talking to you about the under eye area because I think that's more what people were interested in and what there's not maybe as much content out there on and um, I was getting the side of my eyes done for the first time my frown line in my forehead and my across forehead lines three areas of Botox and then the under eye treatment that Dr Mira does she doesn't offer it as a standalone Botox treatment. It is available as an add-on to getting um, another area of Botox done. So I was getting those three areas and the under eyes, which is what we're about to go into. So you are going to see needles, you are going to see the needles going in, and you're going to see quite a lot of blood because my face, just so typically because I was filming it, decided to bleed out in this one. If you're squeamish, down in the description box there will be timestamps for each of the chapters of the video so if you want to click buy onto the next chapter after the real time treatment which is this chapter you can click onto that to just skip by the blood in the needles. So frown again. And then raise your eyebrows. And then relax. And smile. Great. And relax. Of course you're going to get a bleed and then you're filming. Of course. It's so it's low if like anything's going to be less than ideal it'll happen the time yeah. you've got a camera on it. 
but the one thing it's you like don't eyeliner. turn the camera on is when it's perfect. I know. It's like when, yeah, when you do the perfect eyeliner on the mm -hmm. one eye. My eyeliner is always squint. <laughs> I bought these stamps that you like put the wing on first. Oh yeah, and I, I can't see even that. manage to stamp them. Oh like, no! Really That's so funny. I know, I feel the exact same. It's like eyelashes as well. Like, oh god, yeah. Because I hardly one ever thing, wear them. Flashing, lovely, another shade's like halfway down your face. Oh, I hardly ever wear them. So when I put even the one on, I'm like, wow, I'm amazing at doing this. Yes. And then the second set, and you're like, oh, nope, yeah, I really yeah. am rubbish. There's a reason this is like somebody's professional Yep. Job. I can't believe some people do it like every, every day. day. I know. Just face me a little bit before we do the next one. Sorted. All sorted. Hey guys, so it is a week since I had the Botox. Um, it's I've had my makeup on for about eight hours and it's a heat wave, so I, I am quite kind of I don't actually think I look as bad in the camera as I thought I might do. Um, but yeah, my my makeup's been on for a while and it's you know a little bit smudgy, a little bit messy, and I thought actually, do you know what? It's kind of a good way for me to show you where the line's sitting at because this is actually when I notice it far more than when I don't have makeup on. So in terms of the Botox, that's me raising my eyebrows now. So I know the, the point of this video is the under eye Botox, but it's definitely taken effect in my forehead lines. Um, but I first got them done, so back in January I got a two areas of Botox, I got my forehead lines and I got my frowny line. Then I went again in April, April kind of time, and I didn't have any movement in my forehead at that point, like the forehead one lasted, but my frowny line is like so, so strong. So that got topped up and then it's been done again, obviously last week. And I do feel it's it's had a bit of an effect since last week, but that one's, we'll see how it is. Um, I think it takes two weeks for the full effect but we'll see where it is in two weeks, but that will, I put the top up in and that will need a top up. Then in terms of when I smile, I do still have a little bit of lineage here. Obviously the main point of this video is my under eyes. So let me come in closer and show you my under eyes. You can see how like rubbed off my eye makeup is more on this eye than this eye. But yeah, so it's this line here. And as you can see, you can still see it even if I am like totally at rest with my face, you can still see that line. And that's the, the thing about that, like like other lines don't appear on your face unless you're pulling certain expressions and then over time, you know, they, they sort of set in and that's how Botox works and then it stops you pulling those expressions. Whereas like this is here, sorry, my camera just cut out, but basically like this line is, is permanently there for me and that's why that line and this line here bother me like far more than any other like kind of lines on my face. But as I say, so it's worse when kind of makeup falls into it and you can see it a bit more. I feel like this, I mean, I feel like this is giving me perspective because it's overall not as bad on camera as I feel like it is when I look at it in the mirror, which just goes to show like even though I don't feel like I'm doing this from like a, like I don't hate it, do you know what I mean? Like it's fine, it's really not the biggest deal. It's something I'm trying different things for. Yes, I would like them to have some kind of an effect, but like my life's not gonna change if that line kind of becomes less. Like I'm not doing this from like a, a place of like desperation or hating myself or anything, but it does just give me a bit of perspective because I feel like it's not even as bad on the camera as I feel like it is in real life. The thing is as well, so I just want to say, I feel like I keep saying like, oh, I think it's worse when I'm like wearing makeup and I could obviously, I could kind of avoid taking makeup into that area. For me, between the, like the shape of my eyes, so you can see they're obviously quite sunken and I've had filler and I'm going to get that filler topped up um, in the near future. So that contributes to 
physical shadows being cast and like obviously this is quite far forward now my eyes are deep set so there's like you know there's a whole load at play. Also, I'm really, really pale, which basically, like, the paler your skin is, the more any kind of veins or discoloration show through. Tan skin will hide things better than really, really pale skin. So those two things, like, the shape of my eye and the paleness of my skin are at play that my under eyes are, like, not as dark as they used to be. They're massively improved, but they are still quite dark. And I'm more concerned. I feel like it makes a bigger difference to my face if I cover that darkness but maybe emphasise the line then having the darkness on show and, and like not having the line being em like I'd rather people saw the line than as much darkness as there. So the discolorations far more, to me I think that makes a far bigger difference to kind of how tired I look etc than having a line be a little bit emphasised by having makeup in it so although I'm moaning about it it's not a life changing thing as I say like I'd rather deal with the discoloration, so I'd rather make the choice to see a line and colour that than not see a line. It's really, really not that big a deal, but at the same time it's a big enough deal that I'm trying different things and would like something to work for it. That is where we're at with this, so that is me at rest, and then smiling, and then smiling widely, and then the other side at rest, smiling, and then smiling widely. So yeah, I feel like this side, so much more expression than this side, but I said that as standard anyway, so that's my crow's feet kind of close up. I feel like everyone looks nicer when they smile unless you look at their smile in a super close up where you're like looking at their eyes and then you get their nose at that like you're at like a weird angle that hopefully nobody would ever really be looking at my nose from and it's um it's not very flattering making this video I have to say you know have a thick skin if you ever want to like look at yourself with these ankles but yeah that's where we're at a week later so forehead very little movement frowny line definitely reduced that's my crow's feet and you've seen the zoom in on my under eyes Good morning guys, it is Sunday 21st of August. I am just out the shower, been drying my hair. To give you a check in in general Botox terms, definitely kicking in. So this is me frowning, raising my eyebrows and smiling. So it's, it's definitely kicking in particularly here, um, which is when I've had it before, so that maybe makes sense. Uh, so to come a little bit closer, so this is my under eye area. So you can see when I smile, still getting those lines. But that's just, I mean, that's physically happening with the raising of my cheek. You know, if I smile widely, you can see like I'm not getting quite the same lines here that I was beforehand. It's definitely kicking in, but I feel like with the under eye Botox, obviously, again, I'm not a medical practitioner, but I believe what Dr. Mira said is that it sort of relaxes the line and causes it to sort of droop out rather than... Like it's not stopping your face making the expressions that create the line in the same way that like Botox in your forehead or whatever it is. So it's not that this is I suppose ever going to stop being created but it just might look a bit softer. I am going to get ready. I'm going out today um, so I will try and remember to do a check in later once I am wearing makeup. Same as I sort of did last week after it's kind of settled. See how much it settles into the line. See if there's any kind of vis visible reduction there because I, I do feel I've, I've such a broken record I know but I do feel I notice this line far more when I've got makeup on than when I do like like this so yeah I will check in with you later on today as promised it's later on it's eight o'clock um so I've had this makeup on for over eight hours now so this is my right eye and this is my left as you can see I've had I actually did wipe my mascara sponges in the restaurant when we were out for dinner but this is the the smudging of the last hour or so so i know it's not the most flattering but obviously the point of this video is to give you like real feedback on the lines of my face so i suppose it was never going to be the most flattering of videos so that is me when makeup's kind of sunken into them i feel like it actually looks vaguely not quite as bad as it did but i don't know i don't know if i just want to see that um but i do think there's a slight improvement 
So, but as soon as I smile, I'm creating that expression. But as I say, like this isn't stopping you from smiling. It, like, you know, that's not quite the same as being able to stop you like raising your eyebrows. Stopping me smiling would need to hear, I presume. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not medically qualified, so don't take my word for it. That's me smiling. So I do still have lines there, like I have my top up next Sunday, so I am going for that obviously, but I, I do think there's been an improvement, massive improvement in my forehead, browning, but I do think like in general this is where I do most of my expressing, so I'm not surprised that there's been much more a uh, sort of smoothing and stopping and responding to the Botox through my forehead and a bit more resistance to it here. Hey guys, so it is September 11th, so two weeks since my top up and this is me raising my eyebrows, frowning, so I've still got a bit of a frown but obviously it's massively reduced. The main point of what you're interested in, my under eyes, and I think this is really, this is the final result of my under eyes really. That's me smiling, so you can see this is definitely reduced right down. I don't think my nothing's going to reduce any further under my eyes in terms of uh, what I did at the top up and and you know where we topped up. So yeah, I think this is pretty much the end result of under eye Botox. And I've got obviously got makeup on at the moment, so it's emphasising the line a little bit. But makeup tends to sink into it. And then this is my other eye, which, you know, I don't have the same kind of extent of line underneath anyway, but for the sake of making sure I give you both eyes. So I did get the top up, but what happened at the top up was we did a little bit more in my forehead, we didn't do anything else under my eyes. So the result you were seeing there, that was the final result that I got from under eye Botox. All in all, for my final thoughts, there's not really any dramatic before and after to show you. I didn't think it made a massive difference. It did soften the lines and I did see more of a difference as expected when I was wearing makeup than I did when I was makeup free. However, because of the shape of my eyes, the lines under my eyes are not caused by me in the way that I can use Botox to stop me frowning or raising my eyebrows or scrunching up at the side. These lines here are not caused by an active muscle in a sense What's causing that is my cheeks. When I smile, my cheeks are raising. So if I was to want to stop that line being created, this would need to be frozen. So I would need to sort of freeze, you know, I'd need to be able to smile about this much so that my cheeks didn't raise because there would be no way for me to be able to smile any wider and my cheeks not to raise up. So my cheeks would need to basically be frozen. There will be somebody you can pay to freeze your face to that degree. If you've got enough money to spend, you can get anything you want, let's be honest. However, the first practitioner that I saw, Lucy, for my under eye filler, doesn't touch the under eyes at all in terms of Botox because she doesn't like the unnatural look of it. Dr. Mira does do the under eyes, but she said, well, you know, and I'm just repeating what she said to me, is to actually stop that line being created in the first place, I need to freeze my cheeks. She wouldn't do that. She did the under eyes, which Lucy wouldn't do, but she wouldn't go further than that because it would look so unnatural. I respect that and I agree with it. It's obviously everybody's personal choice. If you want to go and get your full face frozen, I am sure somebody somewhere will do that. But I just want to minimise the lines under my eyes. I don't want to not be able to talk or not be expressive or you know completely freeze my face in a totally unnatural way that is although i get botox and i am obviously using that to try and soften my lines and slow the aging process down a little bit i am somebody who's much more interested in using that two or three times a year to slow things down in conjunction with a skincare routine so at the moment if i pull my fringe back you can see my eyebrows are raising i can frown if I smile, 
that's where my the sides of my eyes are at this point and um, so this is a few months on from me getting this initial treatment me actually filming this bit to talk to you if i was to be doing this every three months so i think i got this treatment at the end of august it would be september october november and um, so i'm nearly at the end of november just now going into december so december is when i would be going to get this done again if i was doing it really regularly for me i'm probably not going to get it done again until like january february it is something i'm getting done but it's not something i'm getting done super regularly i'm not keeping my face frozen i don't want that super frozen look that's just not my taste so i would rather have a couple of lines that i can't soften away and whatever than freeze my face in a way that would look completely and utterly unnatural. Having said that though, I am absolutely still interested in seeing what is out there that without freezing my face and looking completely unnatural could help soften those lines. So the next video in this series will be me getting my under eye filler again. You can obviously combine all of these treatments at one time. So you can get under eye filler, Botox and you could use an LED light mask all at the same time it does not need to be that you pick one treatment if you were combining filler and botox what you would do is get the filler first i did ask the question you would get the filler first so that the line is pushed out by the filler so that you can really see the shape of what the filler is doing to the line because although as i said already filler does not stop the line forming so if that's what you're looking for filler won't do it it does massively improve the look of it because it pushes it out, it lets more light into the area. Because it would change the shape of the eye, you would get the filler first, then you would get the Botox on top of the filler. So that's how you would combine it if you did want to do both. However, as well as filler, I am potentially at the moment quite interested in Profilo, which is an injectable. I'm still doing my research into it. I'm not necessarily committed to going for it at this point, but that is something that I am looking into and seeing how that might be able to help those lines. So let me know if that's something you would be interested in seeing in this series and if so, if I decide to go for it, I will film it. Overall, on Botox alone, absolutely works on certain lines. So great results for me in my forehead and on my frown line down the middle here. I am potentially interested in getting it in the bunny lines so that um, that's maybe a way that I am moving my face that makes those lines as well that I could get on top of. But ultimately in terms of those lines there along my under eyes, it's my cheeks raising that's causing it and Botox under my eye is not going to stop my cheeks creating that line and creating that movement it's not going to work in that sense it is probably something I will get done again as an add-on to my normal Botox I do think it made a difference I do think it softened the line but for me ultimately the filler has made far more of a difference to the overall appearance of the line and my general under eye area than the Botox has done that's my final thoughts and my conclusions on Botox under the eye so I hope this has been helpful and answered any questions that you might have had any further questions that you've got as i said i'm not a medical practitioner but please feel free to leave them down below and i will either ask a medical practitioner if i can or i will give you my experience as a patient and as somebody who is getting these treatments but who is not qualified in the treatments themselves thank you very much for watching this video and i will see you in my next one bye